Yo, what's going on guys? And today we're gonna to be talking about the NBA coaching carousel and the candidates for them. So before we start today's video, I wanna hear who do you believe if your team has a coaching vacancy, who do you think they're gonna hire? And if they don't and you're just you just believe a team's gonna hire a certain person, let me hear those comments down below. I'm very, very curious into hearing who do you guys believe is going to get hired. This time of year always, in my opinion, is one of the most interesting times of year to just you know not speculate but basically like who's going to be the coach you know uh so it's very interesting what's going to happen so i want to hear right now down below what do you guys believe so let's get right into it and if you guys haven't been following the boston celtics i think they're going to hire sam cassell and the other two would be obviously chauncey billups and the third those are the top two external. I think the third is definitely going to be an in-house hire. What's his face? I'm at. I can't. I can't remember his name, but they're definitely going to hire a guy, a uh, person of color, and it's because that's something they want to do, and they also want to hire a coach that's accountable. So, with those two factors in mind, Sam Cassell, he was there. He he was an executive for doc rivers in the past so i think that's why they're gonna just do that out of you know not simplicity but just because they they probably believe that's the best for them so with that being said who is going to be their you know other coach rick carlisle's been linked there but I don't, I don't believe it they have talked to multiple guys on this team with alan loranga and I, one other man I'm I'm blanking on Celtics coaches I gotta I gotta Google this right now but it, it's definitely gonna be a guy I call because the big thing was supposedly Marcus Smart was favorited by Darvin Ham's another guy who's been in U Udoka but basically supposedly there was a lot of favoritism from Brad Stevens towards Marcus Smart and Jalen Brown felt like he was criticized too much so Jay Laranga or two as a guy who is very very up there so if we move to the next team just not to like stick on one team too long you know dallas mavericks jason kidd and terry stotts are the top two external from what they said but jamal mosley is the man that they believe is gonna th be like the best because it might Put everyone's mind at ease if they go in-house and elevating Mosley, who has put his time in as an assistant. He's been on staffs such as Denver and Cleveland since 2005, so he deserves an opportunity. Indiana, I really think, like if we sit here and want to really talk about it, I think it's going to be Terry Stotts. Terry Stotts has just been linked to that job even before. So there's a lot of talent on that roster. But yeah, I think Terry Stotts, I think you could do some really nice things offensively with this roster. And you just hope that Miles Turner will be the key piece to keep that def defense together. So there's a lot of talent on there. And we really got to see their, them at full strength. Like Nate McMillan really overachieved despite all the injuries. And Kevin Pritchard and company have a lot of players. Sabonis, Turner. Like there's a lot there. And people got to appreciate it appreciate what they got so now if we go down i feel like terry stotts is there i don't know anybody else but the reason why i believe terry stotts is because basically he was connected before even he got fired so it just seems like he's just gonna go there the new orleans pelicans they're not hiring Teresa weatherspoon i've heard those rumblings but i've also heard that's not happening i've heard straight up that's just not happening like, especially since what Zion just said, that's not happening. And if they're doing an in-house hire, it's Fred Vinson. Fred Vinson was one of the top executive, and he's been with the organization since 2010, working under William, Monty Williams, Alvin Gentry, and Steve Van Gundy. So he's expected to get a strong consideration for the job, given his reputation and seniority within the organization. While Witherspoon is a highly decorated former WNBA player, and she only joined the Pelicans last offseason as part of Van Gundy's staff, and has previous experience as a collegiate head coach at her alma mater, Louisiana Tech. So, you know, 
I'm not a fan. I'm not, I don't think Teresa Witherspoon is going to be the one. I really think it's going to be Fred Vincent if they go in like in house out out of house. The Athletic has Imi Imi Yudoka. He's a foreign player who's done a great job moving up the assistant coaching racks, and he should be able to teach the, some of these guys defense. Okay, at the very least. Now, the Orlando Magic is an interesting one. Steve Clifford left. I really like Steve Clifford. And both Bleacher Report and The Athletic have Darvin Ham, Darvin Ham, who has been the league, around the league, he's been very impressive, and everyone really likes him as an assistant coach for years. And it seems like people really believe Darvin Ham, the longtime assistant, is going to finally get his chance. And he's been with Mike Budenholzer since 2013, first in Atlanta, now in Milwaukee. And he has a re reputation as a sharp defensive mind with a background in player development. And there's Jonathan Isaac, Markel Fultz, Chuma Okeke, and even Mo, Mo Bamba, Cole Anthony. A lot of talent there for being good at defense, that team. Now, the Portland Trailblazers, the Athletic has them going with our man Mike D'Antoni, which I don't think so. Their, their problem was defense. They're not going to hire another offensive-minded coach who never has had a top five defense. I think I'm going to go with the Bleacher Reports, Chauncey Billups. They've been also rumored with Becky Hammond and Daw, Don Staley are known to have an interview or are planning an interview, so I don't think so. Uh, but the reason why I think it's Chauncey Billups is this goes way back when the GM, Oleshi, who is the general manager calling the shots right now, was the GM of the Clippers when they signed Billups. And Oleshi has com often compared Damian Lillard to Billups as a leader in his locker room presence. As a bonus, Lillard publicly endorsed Billups' candidacy after the team's part of the stops. Lillard's first choice, Jason Kidd, pulled himself out of the running after he was endorsed by, Bill by Lillard. So I think it's going to be Chauncey Billups. Plus, if you guys didn't know, Damian Lillard has like final say or whatever, or like has a very big input into who they're hiring. Now, the Washington Wizards, I love them, and I wonder why Scott Brooks left. Really, I think they're saying they couldn't agree on the price is a lie. But both the Athletic and Bleacher Report want the native Wes Unsell Jr. If you guys don't know Wes Unsell, recording stuff, but yeah, his mom and dad actually have a school in Baltimore. Baltimore. I'm gonna say that back home with my correct accent. But basically, the reason I know this because I'm from there, and I like West Unsell is like a legend. But basically, he's a native, so you could say like his dad played for the Bullets. I'm, did West Unsell himself play for the Bullets? I don't. I don't know if he did, but I'm pretty sure he might have. But either way, he's the most deserving. He's been on the bench for years. Like he. He should be the perfect coach, whether or not Bradley Beal stays. But Unsell has interviewed for a few jobs during last season off cycle, including Chicago Bulls. He has a reputation as a great defensive mind, and he has a connection with the Wizards. His late father is the greatest player in the franchise history, dating back to the Baltimore Bullet days, and also coached the team in the early 90s. And really, people... The best part is Wes Unsell played at John Hopkins. If you play any sport at John Hopkins, you're a freaking genius. He went to Loyola, which a bunch of my friends went to, Loyola, Loyola Blayfield, which is a very proper school, a pro private, is a popular private school near my house back home. And, you know, he played for the, I don't even know, he never played in the NBA. He just went straight to coaching, coached for the Wizards for six, seven years, and you know, he was actually nine years with them. All right, so basically, straight out of college, he went undrafted in 99. And basically, in his ninth year, after eight years of personal advanced scouting, he was promoted as assistant coach. He, so he bet, spent freaking like 15 years with the franchise, or 14 years. And because he was being denied a front row bench, one of three per team. So he took a year with Golden State, then he went to Orlando, and now he's been in Denver so uh, as a player also was someone who thinks first and with a good understanding of the game as a coach he was he has an unbelievable work ethic a grinder and has a reputation for developing young talent he has been described as personable 
pragmatic, possessed of pedigree that is just about as regal as it, it gets around any golden court. He lives in Denver with his wife and children. So yeah, I think that's basically it. Yeah, let me hear you guys thinking. I don't think any female is getting hired at anytime soon. I'm not against a woman coach. If a person can coach, they can coach. My problem is I don't think... First off, she's going to have to be black. She can't be white. I'm sorry. If it's going to be a female coach, she's going to have to be a black coach. Who's going to be the first coach? Because first off, like, just players are going to uh, relate better, and it's, it's a trend. And, you know, if you look at the final six of the final teams were coached by four of the six final teams in this playoffs are coached by a black guy or African-American. So shows that, like, look – it works like players respond better you know like it's it seems like former nba coaches who are african-american or black i don't i'm like some people are like don't like i'm not even getting into it but you're right so let me hear what do you guys think of this whole situation with the coaches females i just don't think players are going to respond if they're already not responding to guys who Part of Brad Stevens being fired is, it, it's not even like him being a personal call. He's a great, he was a good coach. It's just like the locker, he just lost, he legitimately lost the locker room, okay? I don't think there's any easier way to put this, okay? And one of the reasons why a person of color is going to be the next coach for them is because they believe it, the team's just going to respond better to it. And it shows that the players respond better to it. So that's why I'm saying if a woman, she's going to have to be black and you know if they're already not agreeing with like white guys who don't play basketball who didn't play basketball who aren't were an athlete being their coach i don't know if they're gonna agree with a WNBA player who's white being their coach that's what i gotta say